Come on up here. Come on, on Gary. Let's go. Come on. This is an alligator farm. We got chicken. Let's go. Come on. Thousands of gators and crocodiles live here at Gatorama in Palmdale, Florida. Alan Register and his family have been farming alligators since 1987. They harvest and sell everything from the skin to the meat. And it's all legal. I've always teased in a serious kind of way that the government did a really good job of telling us about how endangered the alligators were, but they haven't done such a good job of telling us that they're no longer endangered. Now, COVID has threatened the entire multi-million dollar alligator product industry and the livelihood of this family. As countries shut down, buyers disappeared. We haven't been able to sell traditionally, you know, to the hide buyers and the tanners and all that. We've had to scramble around to try to figure out who we're going to sell to. Gatorama can usually sell 500 to 600 hides by November. This year, it hasn't sold any. It really is scary because it's your livelihood. It's not like this is a hobby that we're doing, you know, just to have fun. We employ 12 or 13 people, and they rely on this money to provide food on their table for their family. The farm incubates about 4,000 eggs every year. The state limits hunting and farming permits. It also has strict regulations for which farms can collect eggs from the wild and how many they can take. It takes about two years to raise a gator before it's ready to be harvested. And it's hard work. Come on, gators. Come on. There you they go. feed the gators every morning with dry food and clean the water in the afternoon. But they don't harvest all of the animals, since the hide must be perfect to sell with no scratches. 80-year-old grandpa has been living at Gatorama since the 1950s, when it was just a tourist attraction. And many others are here just for the tourists. Even in a good year, about 70% of the company's profit comes from visitors hoping to catch a good show. But that business has dwindled too. Gatorama closed for two months in the spring, then opened slowly in June. Since then, Alan has seen an increase in visitors, many eager to find outdoor activities amid a pandemic. We're fortunate here at Gatorama that we have the tourism to kind of back up our, uh, our farming operation. All right, there we go. We, got we did a face-to-face -face encounter. It's just something we offer here at Gator Rama. Anybody can come up, uh, even a 10-year-old kid, if their parent goes with them and signs the waiver. Uh, we bring the guests out onto the alligator bank, and we'll pull up a 14 to 10-foot alligator, maybe three to four of them at once, and they'll be caught up out of the water, and then you're actually allowed to be about three feet face-to-face -face from them, and you're going to feed them. Open. Hold. Then open. They're all coming. They're all coming. Good boy. Water Just 50 years ago, the American alligator was classified as an endangered species in the United States. Hunting and habitat loss ravaged the population in the 1950s. The state banned hunting and implemented conservation efforts. The population recovered and was taken off the list in 1986. Farming and hunting became legal again, with strict regulations. Most people you've run into today would tell you that there's way too many alligators in Florida. So many alligators that they can be seen crossing streets and climbing fences. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service considers American alligators a big success story of the Endangered Species Program. And Allen says that alligator farms played a big role in conservation of the species now. Florida's Wildlife Commission says regulated alligator farming helps keep populations stable and provides sustainable funding for research that created value for that animal. When you create a value for an animal, that's the best way to, to save a species. Now, there are almost 100 licensed alligator farms. And alligator farming is dangerous. Both Ben and Alan have the scars to prove it. Here comes, here he comes. Oh. It's definitely different, but I've kind of become desensitized to it. I've been here since I was four years old, so this is no different than a golden retriever, you know, to me than it is to some people, the dogs. But the registers see a bright future in alligator farming. And just as Ben grew up around alligators, his four-year-old son, Benson, is already learning the ropes. Oh, yeah, like this. Benson, 
My uh, grandfather started this, then my parents took it over from my grandfather, and I'm in the process of taking it over from them right now. It is kind of neat to be able to pass something down from generation to generation.